This is On The Hunt at foxnews.com. Hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan Hunt. Saudi Arabia is continuing its campaign of airstrikes against Houthi rebels in Yemen. Those airstrikes backed by the U.S., although not carried out by U.S. aircraft. But is it working? The rebels seem to be pushing further and further into the important port city of Aden. So let's ask our guests now where this is all headed. Colonel Cedric Layton, formerly of the U.S. Air Force, uh, currently president of Cedric Layton Associates, and David Weinberg, senior fellow with the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. Uh, Colonel Layton, if I may come to you first. First, uh, as uh, a retired U.S. Air Force colonel, are the airstrikes working? Simple question, yes or no? Well, and unfortunately, it's not a simple answer, Jonathan. The big idea here <laughs> is not. that <laughs> the big idea here is what are the real Saudi goals? And uh, you know, if the goal is just to get the Houthis to the negotiating table, then perhaps the airstrikes are working. Now, from a tactical military sense, because there's some difficulties apparently with the targeting that the Saudis are using, I would say that the strikes are not working. At least they're not working as part of a concerted air campaign or military campaign that I can discern at this moment. And, and, and Colonel, it, it seems to me, and, and you have said this before on uh, various subjects that we have spoken about over the years, is that air power is rarely successful on its own. That's right. And the one big exception that you're looking at is perhaps you could say Serbia, Bosnia, you know, the Balkan crisis in the 90s, where air power was pretty decisive, but there was a lot of ground movement, not from U.S. forces, obviously, but uh, from local forces uh, in and around that conflict. Uh, so that's perhaps the one exception. But other than that, uh, air power needs to be used in concert with other means of power, whether they be diplomatic, military on the ground, military maritime, uh, such as naval power. Those are the kinds of things that make a difference. And a ground presence is essential if you are going to achieve either total control of a particular area that you're going after or if you want to influence uh, the rest of the outcome. So that's really where air power has its limits. It can be a great facilitator, but there are definite limits to it. Uh, David Weinberg, the, I want to pick up on uh, something that Colonel Layton says there. Uh, the Saudis yeah. themselves intimated earlier this week that they were going to look more at diplomatic pressures, humanitarian issues, other counter-terrorism measures, uh, but they seem to have gone back, at least in the, in the very short term, to these airstrikes. How can those other elements of a coordinated strategy play in here? Mm. So, what you're referring to, uh, on Tuesday, the, the Saudis announced an end to their Operation Decisive Storm and a start to a new operation that, that would focus much more on the political process, uh, which they were, were calling Operation Restore Hope. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some of that was, was kabuki theater. The, the Saudis had um, made a couple of missteps on their, on their airstrikes and struck civilian targets in a number of notable instances. Um, one instance in which they struck a military target on Monday, uh, a huge weapons and ammunition store, uh, set off a massive, um, enormous uh, a mushroom cloud um, over the capital uh, of Sana and uh, created a, a huge shockwave, uh, injured uh, hundreds of people, killed dozens, uh, and within, uh, also that was the day when reportedly the, the Saudis um, intimated to America that they were going to be ending that stage of their airstrikes within 24 to 48 hours, and that's exactly what they did. Uh, so it seems like um, they may have bitten off more than they could chew um, diplomatically in terms of, of what the optics of that operation might look like. So what they did is they transitioned from one military operation to another with a, with a, a more prominent political angle. So what they're no longer doing is they're no longer going after missiles or aircraft um, or um, uh, destroying command and control centers, the sorts of things they were doing to basically ensure um, military dominance over the, over the rebels in Yemen. Uh, but what they haven't been able to do is they haven't been able to restore the legitimate government inside Yemen, and they haven't been able to actually push the rebels back from controlling the capital or large parts of northern Yemen. And that's something they're not going to be able to do, and these airstrikes apparently are still continuing in a couple of parts of Yemen because the rebels actually haven't been cowed into, uh, into surrendering. 
Right, D David, the rebels, uh, as, as we know, are Shiite. Saudi Arabia is majority Sunni. Uh, the rebels are backed by Iran. How significant is that as an element to this, uh, David, whether it, whether it be the, the Shiite nature of the rebels or the, the Iranian backing? And how far do you think Saudi Arabia would go to prevent the Houthis uh, taking control of Yemen uh, in much greater force? Mm. So the, the sectarian element of this conflict is a very significant one. The, the Saudis have not shown themselves to be particularly concerned with power struggles between one faction or another in Yemen over the years. But when they see yet another Middle Eastern capital falling to Iranian Shiite proxies, um, they, they basically had alarm bells going off in their heads there. Uh, they basically saw this as a red line, uh, an Iranian um, uh, satellite on the Arabian Peninsula sharing a border with the kingdom. Uh, there is no way that the Houthis would have been able to, cap, uh, to capture Yemen's capital without the enormous amounts of support that they were getting from Iran in the last year, and in fact over the last several years, including weapons by the literal ton. Uh, this, this, so this sectarian element plays large in that sense, and it also plays large domestically with the Saudis, who were getting a lot of flack internally for launching airstrikes against the so-called Islamic State, which, like the, the majority of Saudis, uh, is a terrorist organization that's Sunni uh, in its, in its uh, allegiance. Mm. Uh, very quickly, both of you, uh, as briefly as you can in a sentence, uh, Colonel Layton, to you first. Uh, any end in sight to this, or is this something that we are all going to be reporting on for months, if not years, to come? I think we'll be reporting on it for months and years to come, Jonathan, because the underlying issues don't go away. Uh, there may be a military truce, a political truce, uh, but nothing, uh, nothing more than that, and that's just going to paper over differences, in my view. And David, your prognosis? So Saudi Arabia's King Salman said at the beginning of the, the campaign that the goal was to create a unitary, stable Yemen where there would be uh, state control over all weapons and um, legitimate equal power sharing. And frankly, if that's his goal, he's guaranteed failure. But either way, he set right. such a high objective, he can't back down now. Okay, David Weinberg, Senior Fellow with the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies, and Colonel Cedric Layton, President of Cedric Layton Associates. Thank you both very much, gentlemen. This has been On the Hunt at foxnews.com.